look at the animation playing on the screen over here you find that a boy is pushing the table and carrying it in the forward direction now as you can see i have marked out the direction in which force is being applied so as you can see when force is being applied in this direction the boy is able to move the table in a straight line so since the table is moving in a straight line the motion is known as linear motion now do you think that a force acting on any body causes only linear motion or do you think it can also cause some other kind of motion let us find out firstly in order to study about any different kind of motion we need to talk about the analogy with a clock so to consider the clock analogy we need to consider two kinds of motion that is clockwise motion and anti clockwise motion what are these now you must have always seen a clock at your home which you used to tell the time now this kind of clock is known as an analog clock so take a look at the wall clock that is hanging at your home you will find that these hands whether it be the minute hand second hand or even the hour hand these hands always move in this direction so this particular direction is known as clockwise direction because normally the hands move in this way so the direction from 1 to 2 then 2 to 3 then 3 to 4 is known as the clockwise direction conversely if we consider moving from 5 to 4 or 4 to 3 3 to 2 and 2 to 1 and so on then that direction is opposite to which the hands move so this is known as the anti clockwise direction so with the knowledge of what clockwise is and anti clockwise is let us proceed further to study about what other kind of motion a force might produce look at this animation closely you will find here that a man is pulling the knob of a door and pulling it open now if you look closely you will find that this door is moving about a particular line this line is known as the axis now as you can see when the man is pulling the door the door is not moving in a straight line instead it is rotating about this axis so we see that when a pulling force is applied on the door knob the door is not moving in a straight line instead it is moving in a clockwise direction with respect to p why because it is moving in this direction and we have studied that this direction is the clockwise direction if you look on the floor you will be able to understand it better because the door moves outward in this direction and it is the clockwise direction which the door is moving about this axis which is known as the axis of rotation similarly when the door is being closed with the help of the door knob you will find that the man is pushing the door and making it close so even in this case the door is not moving in a straight line when a pushing force is being applied on the door knob the door is moving in this direction so clearly the door is not moving in a straight line instead the door is moving in the anti clockwise direction about p that is the axis of rotation so in both these cases we find that the door is not moving in a straight line but in a rotatory motion about a fixed axis a similar thing happens in case of a seesaw now i'm sure that when you were young you must have been to the playground and you enjoyed playing on the seesaw so you must not have wondered it then but now let me tell you that even in a seesaw it does not move in a straight line the motion of the seesaw is also a rotatory motion so when you sit on the seesaw the seesaw moves about a particular axis this axis passes through this point p and you can better understand it if you consider this axis as going into the plane of the board or coming out from this point so this is the axis about which the seesaw is rotating so when this boy is sitting on the seesaw p is the position 
or the point about which this tesa is rotating in this direction. So this direction is the clockwise direction. So we can say that the weight of the boy applies a force at the end of the seesaw and this causes the seesaw to move in a clockwise direction but not in a straight line. Now this ability of the body, whether it be the door or the seesaw, to turn in a particular direction depends on certain factors. Now let us see what those factors are. Firstly, we see that force does not only cause linear motion. An application of force may also cause the object to rotate. And this rotation may be clockwise or anticlockwise. So now let us talk about on what factors this clockwise or anticlockwise rotation depends on. Firstly, notice this animation. You will find that the boy applies a pushing force, F, on the doorknob and he is able to open the door because the door is rotating. Now if you look at the animation closely, you will find that the boy exerts himself to a certain level to open the door. But when a man is applying a force on the doorknob, which is a greater amount of force, F dash, we find that the door is opening and he is able to open the door with greater ease or in other words, the door rotates more easily in the second case, even though the force was being applied at the same point, that is the doorknob. So what can we say? We can say that the ability of rotation of the door is dependent or is influenced by the force being applied. Thus we conclude that the capability of rotation of an object about a fixed axis is dependent on the force being applied. So in this case, F dashed is greater than F. That is, the force being applied by the man is greater than the force being applied by the boy. So we can say that the capability of rotation is directly proportional to the force applied on the object because the man was able to push it more easily. Now let us talk about if there is any other factor influencing the capability of rotation. Over here you will find that the same man is applying a certain amount of force on the doorknob and he is able to make the door rotate about P and cause it to open. So due to application of force, the door rotates and it opens. Now this man applies the same amount of force to open the door but instead of pushing the doorknob, he pushes at a place that is slightly away from the doorknob. Let's say somewhere in between. Now if you look at the animation closely, you will find that he experiences a certain level of difficulty in opening the door. But why is this happening? I told you that he is applying the same pushing force, but he is applying it away from the doorknob. So we find that the door does not rotate as easily as it did in the previous case. So what can we conclude from this? From this we can conclude that the distance that is the distance from the axis of rotation to the point of application of force is different for both cases because in the first case the man was applying the force at the doorknob. So the distance is let's say D1 but in the second case the man is applying the force somewhere in between. So that point of application of force from the axis of rotation is D2. In the first case, the distance of F, that is the force from P, axis of rotation is more and capability of rotation is more. In the second case, the distance of F from P is less. So the capability of rotation about P is less. Thus we can conclude that capability of rotation of the particular door or any body about a fixed axis is directly proportional to the distance between point of application of force and the fixed axis of rotation. So this capability of rotation has a particular scientific name. This is known as moment of force or torque. 
Now, moment of force or torque is defined scientifically as the turning effect of a force on a body about an axis. Two things to remember again. It is the turning effect of a force on a body about a fixed axis. So this is known as moment of force or torque. And this capability we find depends on two things. That is, it depends on the force being applied and it also depends on the distance. So we can say that this capability is directly proportional to F and also directly proportional to D. Thus, torque on an object is given as F force multiplied by D. That is the distance. So F is the force applied on the object and D is the perpendicular distance between the point of application of force and the axis of rotation. So let us say I am applying a force at this point and this body, let's say this rod, has to rotate about this axis, which is P, and this is F. So I have to always consider the perpendicular distance or this distance. I cannot consider any other kind of distance. Let's say this distance or this distance, because that would not give me the torque. What would give me the torque is only the perpendicular distance. So let us see what the unit of torque is in SI system. Now we found out that the torque on an object is given by force into distance. Now the unit of force is Newton and the unit of distance is meter. So the unit of torque, what do you think it would be? It would be Newton meter. Thus, the SI unit of torque is Newton meter. Similarly, the CGS unit of torque can be found out. The unit of force in CGS is dyne. And the unit of distance is centimeter. Thus, the unit of torque in the CGS system would be equal to dyne centimeter. Thus, dyne centimeter is the CGS unit of torque. Now, torque on an object is responsible for rotating the object. Now, we have studied that the rotation can occur in two ways. It can either be clockwise or it can be anticlockwise. So, in that manner, the direction of torque can be classified as either clockwise, that is this direction, or anticlockwise. And depending on in which direction the body is rotating, we classify torque as a clockwise torque or an anticlockwise torque. And since there is a direction associated with torque, that is a clockwise or an anticlockwise direction, torque is a vector quantity. Now I have a small problem for you. The problem states that a boy of mass 30 kgs is sitting at a distance of 2 meter from the center of the seesaw or the point of rotation of the seesaw. And we have to find the measure of torque that is exerted on the seesaw. So firstly, we have studied that torque is given by force into perpendicular distance. So first we need to find out the force because the perpendicular distance is given as 2 meters. So in order to find out the force, we need to find out the weight of the boy because the weight of the boy is the force that he is exerting in the downward direction. So now, we see that force is equal to mass of the boy into acceleration due to gravity. Mass of the boy has been given as 30 kgs and acceleration due to gravity. For ease of calculation, I consider 10 meters per second square. So the force exerted by the boy is 300 Newton. So 300 Newton is the force which the boy is exerting in the downward direction and the seesaw is turning about this point. Now it has been given that the perpendicular distance is 2 meters. 
so i have f and i have d torque is nothing but f into d so i get t as f which is 300 newton into d that is 2 meter and this gives me 600 newton meter so 600 newton meter is the measure of torque now since the boy is sitting on the right hand side of the seesaw and he is exerting a force in this direction can you tell me in which way the seesaw will turn obviously if this is the axis the seesaw will turn in this direction that is this particular direction so this torque which we have found out is a clockwise torque it is a clockwise torque which has a value of 600 newton meters so we learned about the capability of rotation of a body about a fixed axis this capability of rotation is known as the torque now what does this torque depend on torque which is also known as moment of force depends on two things the force acting on the body and the perpendicular distance of the body from its fixed axis of rotation and torque is given by the product of force and the perpendicular distance in between the point of application of force and the fixed axis of rotation